Hey everyone, welcome back. Session number two of QTP and identifying objects like an expert. I'm so excited to have you guys here today. If you were not with us, we started off in session one where I went through this whole diagram. So go ahead and catch that video if you missed it. And otherwise, you can proceed here and we will continue with where we left off. So I'm going to open my application. It's going here and let's go to yahoo.com. Okay. So now we have a web application. Guys, there are many types of applications. There are web, web services. There are desktop applications. There are templates. You can automate almost anything. In fact, there is a wise saying about QTP in that you can automate anything you want. The only thing that limits you is your knowledge of VB script. And in my experience, I have found that to be true, that anything can be automated no matter what. It's just always a matter of your expertise in VB script and how much time do you have to finish a certain project. Anyways, so we got this web application, okay? And how does this web application compare to what we talked to? Well, let's remember the cars that we talked about, right? And all of these cars are living in a world, right? They live, in fact, let me change this color. Okay. This is a world. This is our world, our planet. Right? All of these cars, all of these objects are stored inside of a world, which is also an object. Remember, now we're going to refer to everything as objects, okay? So they're all stored there. And how does that relate to our application? Let me pull out QTP, which is right here. Okay, starting page. Let me go ahead and open up a new test. So let me get another tool. This right here, guys, let me show you. Object Spy. Do you see that little tooltip? Get used to this tool. It is going to be one of your best friends with QTP. I will help you master the use of it. If you don't know how to use it, then it's a serious problem. So let me click on it and we can take a look. Look, you get this finger that comes up here. We're going to go ahead and click it. And look, see the little tooltip? It gives you instructions on what to use this for. I'm going to click this, and I'm going to point to the website. Okay? Now, one very, very important thing, guys, is that you have to open your QTP before your web application. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize everything properly. In fact, let me go ahead and show you this. I'm going to stop the video for a second so that we don't spend time loading everything, okay? Okay, so we got the web page open first. Remember, that's a problem. Now, over on my other screen, I clicked on QTP. It's checking for the license. It's being opened. So now QTP is going to open second. And you will see how Object Spy is going to have problems recognizing everything. Do you guys see that? It can't recognize any of the objects, okay? Just look here. It recognizes everything as a page, okay? Do you guys see this? Just remember, look. If I point here, it's still a page. If I point here, it's still a page page. Everything is a page. Okay. Just remember this. And we're going to go back to the correct way of doing this. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this. I'm going to open QTP first. Guys, you won't believe how many times I've had automation experts and I'm making the air quotes right now come to me and say, Hey, when I open QTP, it's not recognizing any of my objects. Can you come and figure out why? And of course, I close QTP. 
I open up QTP again, then I go ahead and open up a browser, and then right away it starts recognizing all the objects correctly. And it's because they're such good automation engineers that they don't even know that you need to open up the web application before QTP. Give me a second while Stupid Internet Explorer crashes over here. Hey guys, sorry about that. It's the daily life cycle of Internet Explorer. It just loves to crash. Remember we were talking about objects and how they have behaviors? I bet one of Internet Explorer's methods is just, it's called crash, huh? Anyways, so what I just did is open up QTP first. And now I'm going to open up my web application. We're going to look at the object spy tool again and see how it recognizes everything. So now look, oh my God, do you guys see all these new objects in here? Look, if I point to the mail, it's now a web element, okay, or a link depending where you point. Same thing over here and so on and so forth, okay? So this is what happens if you open up the application correctly. Okay, anyway, so we see this whole big object, right? So look, everything that I point inside of here, let me stop right here. Do you guys see how on the left in the object spy, there is a hierarchy, okay? So look, you can see over here, we have a browser. Inside of that browser, we have a page. And inside of the page, we have web element. Okay? One second, let me just capture some object. Bring the application back up. Capture this object, for example. Okay. So let's look at this object. So there's a hierarchy, right? The browser is the parent of all of the objects. And then the page is the son of the parent. And then the link is the son or daughter of the page. Okay, there's a hierarchy. And why am I showing you guys this hierarchy? Well, it's because, one second, let me, okay, I just wanted you guys to see this. So. Look at our real world, our real world in terms of objects, right? We have a world, and inside of our world, we have different objects, whether they're cars, whether they're people, roads, trains, computers, QTP, anything. But everything is contained inside of the world object. So it's the parent just like the browser of the web application, okay? It's the parent, it's the container that holds everything in place. So anything you throw in there will be related to the browser. Do you guys understand? So now if you look at the page level, that can be like a person, for example. And a person lives inside of the world. And a person has certain properties. Do you guys see this right here? Here are all of the properties. One second, let me close this. Move this over here for a little bit. Uh, I think it's good right here. Pull up the web application. Grab object spy. Okay, so look. We have properties right here. Just like we had properties of the car. And we have values. Just like we had values of cars. Because, like I said guys, everything is thought in terms of objects. A page is an object. A browser is an object. A link is an object. Our world over here, the purple box, is an object. The cars are objects. And everything has properties, and those properties have values, okay? And that is the key to understanding object identification. 
and I hope I've made it clear for you guys, okay? Anyways, let's continue. So do you guys see, for example, let's look at the page, how this page has all of these properties. Let's go down. Do you guys see that? Now we're at the link level. Let's look at all of these properties of the link. It has even more. Do you guys see that? They're the same thing as these properties right here. They're used for object identification. And the key to identifying an object correctly is to find one that is unique so that you can do stuff to it, right? Just like over here, if I wanted the yellow car versus the green car, how can I know which car I need to choose? Well, based on the color, right? Based on the color and its value of yellow, you can decide, do you want the yellow one or the lime green one? Same thing here. If you want to do something to that link that I clicked on, which was the mail link, you need to pick the right one. Because, let's look at this, guys. I'm going to click this button right here. What it does is, look, tooltip, copy the identification properties to the clipboard. Okay, I'm going to do that. Let me open up my awesome tool. One second. Here it is. Paste this in here. Okay. So now I got everything that you saw from Object Spy. I got it in a text format. Okay. Let me get an, another object. Bring up the web application. And I know exactly what object I want. Look, we have a mail object here, and we have a mail object here, okay? I want that one. Oh, I forgot. Did you guys see that? I forgot to click this finger, so I actually clicked on it. But when you just click on the finger, at that point, you can't click on anything, okay? But if I want to do something to this, and I hold the control key, I can drag. Do you guys see that? I can drag and do stuff just like normal. But when I let go of control, now I have object spy functionality. So let me come in here and grab the links properties. I highlight the object that I want and then I click this button here to get the properties and paste them to the clipboard. Control V to paste. And now let's take a look at all of these properties. Now I know it's not as beautiful as the black screen with the beautiful yellow cars, but this is our job, right? And this is what we got to do. So let's look at some of the properties that can uniquely identify an object. Right away, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate a lot for you so that you never really consider these properties because they will rarely be helpful in object identification. Definitely at some point I will get into that and why they're useless, but for now, I just want to teach you guys all the correct ways to do everything. I will not teach you guys something wrong and then reteach it and confuse everybody. I don't think that's right. So I'm going to remove what you guys don't need to see and we'll look at the rest. Uh, the rest of the stuff is okay, right? So let's look at some of these properties. Well, we can see that it's href property is different, but it's dangerous to use this property because we can see this it's a web address it's probably going to change in fact i'm sure it will change so we're going to remove this so what's our goal here right now why am i doing all this because remember let's look at the application if i want to do something to this link versus this link I need to be able to identify it correctly, right? Just like I need to identify between the one yellow car and another yellow car. So I'm showing you guys how to do that. Okay? So let's see what else we got. Text. Target doesn't have a value. Oh, by the way, let me explain this to you guys here. So the way these properties are copied and pasted is just like they were for our real world. We have a property and we have its value, okay? Same thing here. We have a property and we have its value and so on and so forth. Do you guys see that? Okay, good. So let's see, what else 
can we eliminate from here? URL, definitely, because that is dynamic and it's going to change. Okay, continue looking. Anyways, so pretty much if you look at this property, outer text, this one has, they look like exactly the same object to me. And it's really hard to identify one versus another, just like our two yellow cars. Do you guys remember this? Car one and car two? We have a similar situation here in the web application. So let's continue. Let's add on to this. Now, let me use the object spy again after I pull up the application. And now we're going to add these objects to our repository, okay? So I'm going to highlight this one. Then I, I want it as a link. And I'm going to click this add object to repository button, okay? So now it was added to the repository. Now, if you're just starting out with QTP, I am sure that you're confused about the object repository. So let me go ahead and open it and I will explain to you guys how it relates to everything. But I notice we're running out of time. We're almost at the 20 minute mark. So I'm going to stop here. Perfect timing and we will progress with object repository in session number three. Thank you guys for joining. Ask me any questions, any help you desire. And remember, I'm at qtptutorial.net. That's where you will get all of the benefits. Anyways, see you in session number three.